Well, hello there again. It's Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, and this is Mapping X Lights 2021, Part Two Mapping. Oh boy. So if you watched the Part One series, um, you would have uh, mastered the layout by now. So we are going to uh, take it for granted that uh, there is nothing wrong with your layout and you have mastered the art of a perfect layout. And if you haven't, go back and watch it and come back when you have. All right, let's get started with this. I've got the perfect layout. Here it is, everything is beautiful, no errors. I've done my check sequence, all the hierarchies are put together. It is now actually time to map in someone's sequence. And it couldn't be easier. It is different than years past. Someone just recently asked, hey, is this any different than uh, last year before I waste my time watching one of your videos? Uh, yeah, or I would not have made it. <laughs> I, would have, I would have just left the link from last year. But this is very different. And again, I'm still surprised how many people don't know about this. It's, a, it's, it's funny. So let's get started. First thing you do when you're going to import a sequence from somebody, is you gotta create a new sequence. I know, it's not intuitive. I know, I know, don't worry, but just do it, please. New sequence, I'm gonna discard any changes I had before. I want a musical sequence, and it's gonna say, okay, great, where's the music? Okay, go to your music folder, bring it in, let's do our house. Boom, done. 40 frames or 20 frames? That's really up to you. If you've got singing faces, go with 40. If uh. If you've got a pretty decent computer, you're not worried about space and larger FSEQ files, go with 40. Uh, if you're a purist and someone trained you five years ago that 20 frames per second is the only thing you should ever use, then go with 20. I'm, I go with 40 each and every time. Now this next step's really important. If you watch the first video, you know where I should be clicking next. No, it's not quick start. No, it's not more options. It's all models change that to the sequence view you created in part one. I'm gonna go with sequence view. I know that will work and click done. And by doing that, I have placed all of the hierarchy in the order it needs to be for the sequence for all the groups and the submodel groups, everything's in perfect pecking order. Gotta love it. Uh, what I like to do next, because X lights can crash, all you gotta do is say that secret word or look at it funny and it might crash on you. So why you lose what you have? So I typically get in the habit of going save as, and I'm just going to save this as our house. There we go. I typically like to put this in the root folder of my directory and I click save and there it is. Next, we are able to import by clicking the import, now this is intuitive, import effects. And it's saying, great, where's your effects? And then we would go to our imported sequences that we learned to make in part one of the three part series. And then we would go to the vendor, whether it's brand X sequences, budget sequences, or extreme sequences, we'll click on it. And then we have some choices. Hopefully the vendor whose sequences you purchase are in zip file format. If they're not, put them there. If we look at our house, and this is the old way, you'd go in here and you'd find it and you would import this. And that's great, but then if it had images, videos, and shaders, you had to go hunt them down. Years ago, you had to do them one at a time. And then that was painful. And then they automated it to a point to where you could actually, well, wait a minute, I'll go to their world, I'll open it, render it, save it, then I'll go back to my world, then I'll import it, and then it would know to bring them all in. It was a pain in the butt for this reason. When you open my world and you're on a little Celeron computer with four gigs of memory, you're gonna wish you had never been to my world. It's gonna be painful, it's gonna take too long. So that was improved with a way that we could automate bringing in images, videos, and shaders in three steps. And by three steps, I mean, with images, you click on one of the images, select all if there were multiple, you go to the browser window, you'd right click, bulk at it, and you'd point to the directory where those images exist. And then you do the same thing with videos and you do the same thing with shaders. And that was sort of the three steps take you 15, 20 seconds. But it's even better now because there is no reason to be mapping from this folder. 
in part one, you learned why we used what's in this folder and it was okay to unzip it. But when you're mapping in a sequence, just go to the zip file. Trust me on this. And we're gonna open this. It's automatically extracting the sequence package in the background and it's gonna open up a mapping dialog window. Now the time this takes may be dependent on what's in that file. If there's a lot of video stuff in there, like there is in this one, it might take a few seconds. All right, just maximize this thing out. And we'll look at this window and I'll quickly explain what some of these things are. Erasing effects on imported models. So if we had created our mapping file and we saved it and we realized we forgot something or we wanted to overwrite the arches with something else, if you turn that on, it'll erase what was there before and replace it with what's new, okay? For the most part, I'm not really messing with that a whole lot. By default, import model blend mode is turned on. This, oh, this is such a godsend. Some sequencers use allow blend mode a lot, which simply takes all of the groups that may have effects and blend them in with other groups. Now, if it's done on, with intent, uh, that's great. But if you do it accidentally and it wasn't designed that way as a sequence, it may not look right, okay? So leave that selected. This way, you don't have to tell the sequence allow blend mode or not to. This will do it for you. The next thing, import media. This is super important. I leave this alone. Uh, you can tell it where you want the faces, gladiators, images, shadow, shaders, <laughs> and videos to go. Uh, but typically, I'm leaving these all in the mapping training uh, root directory of the show directory, okay? And that just sort of works for me. But you could put them wherever you want. This is so important because when you map this, it's going to put them all in there. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, the next thing we need to do is click auto map. Now, what will auto map do? Well, it just did a bunch of things for us. Here's the beauty of this. All of these models on the left are what's in your show. Everything that's on the right is what's in the sequencer's show, the vendor possibly, right? So you may not have everything it has over here. And in part three, we'll talk about models that are different than models in the sequencer's world versus yours, okay? But for now, this brought everything over because it understands the naming convention. The submodel group's naming conventions should never change. And because they don't, it'll bring everything over perfectly. Now, what did it not bring over? It didn't bring over the men tree group. There is no way we can enforce everybody to use universal naming conventions. It's just never gonna work. I would love it, but it's just not going to. So it's very easy because these are alphabetically listed. You can just go to the M section and you can drag and drop this. Or you can click in here and you can double click on it. Or you can double click and get rid of it. You can click on here and then double click here. There's like 29 different ways to get a model where it needs to go. Pretty cool, right? Matrix, double click, matrix is in there. Peaks group, which I would use probably the outlines. So we'll just go up here to Eves. E -E. Uh, and if there's an Eves group, there already is. So I'm going to leave that alone. Stars group, Verts group. I call mine House Verts All because I'm an idiot. Um, there we go. Mm, spiral tree. We'll go over here. I know there are twig trees or spiral trees. And there they go. Spiral trees. We'll leave peaks alone because that's already in the Eves group. We'll go up here, see what we're missing. Floods. Back up to the F section. Floods group. See how fast this is? Candy cane group, uh, arches group. Let's put that in the right one. Arches, and I use arch triple, and all pixel group. There we go, and we'll use all pixel group. In part three, we'll talk about different things you could do when we don't have something that aligns, okay? All right, that is looking pretty, pretty good. Now, you might also see models that are not groups, such as this GE Prime Cube LG1. That's a side or a whole group or a whole model. And if we had seen that on the left, we would drag that to there. Or if I had isolations with many trees at the model level, you would see those over here and you would drag those over here. 
uh, and, and kind of a cool way of doing that. I'm just gonna use this for illustration. Uh, if this were called mini tree one, two, three, four, five, I would just click on this and go one, two, three, four, five. And it put mini tree one, two, three, four, five all the way in there. I'm gonna take those out because that is not the right effect, although it might look better, who knows? All right, and that's sort of it. You can click OK and it's gonna go ahead and map over the effects. Uh, what you might want to get in the habit of doing, especially if you have multiple sequences from same vendors, is go ahead and save this mapping file. And we wanna save this mapping file in the mapping files folder we created, and I would give it a name. Let's call this our house mapping. You can have as many mapping files as you like, so if you wanna experiment with different ideas, knock yourself out. And we'll click OK. The nice thing about having a mapping file is that if you make changes later, you don't have to do all this work here again. You can load the mapping file, this is what you'll see, and then you can make your additions or edits. Okay, pretty cool, pretty easy. Now we can click OK. And just like that, everything's in there. Now, there is one thing that you're not gonna see in here, and, and the timing still work. You're just not seeing them here because we're using a different view that is still acting as the main view, the master view. So if you just click here, edit display elements, just click on all your timings and just a single error, oh, <laughs> no errors, a single arrow over and it will put them there and you're all good. Hierarchy is good, timings are in, so that you may work with them should you want to. And at this point, what I do, I know you're probably thinking, why don't I just render it? I would go ahead and save it. It took 0.665 seconds to save it. If you were rendering and it took 30 seconds, a minute, four minutes to render it, uh, you'd feel pretty upset that you hadn't saved it. And then you gotta map it again. But you could load that mapping file, right? I mean, I could import, import effects, I could go back to the original source file, which is in my imported sequences, stream sequences. I could click on the zip file. It's gonna open this up, and again, because I've got this really big video file in here for P5 Matrix, it's gonna take a few seconds. But this is a great way to get back to the mapping dialog, which is not gonna have anything in it. It's a blank slate until you tell it to load the mapping file, which happens to be in mapping files folder you created, double click on the mapping file called our house mapping, and now you're back to where you left off. And if you needed to make that change, you could do that here. Or if you wanted to try out different things. Uh, when you do this, there is no need to click timings a second time. It's a one and done for you. So if you were to click these and click okay, you're gonna end up with new, two new timings, two beats, and two our house course. So don't do that. Now I'm gonna cancel out of this. So now you know how to get in there. At this point, this is a perfect opportunity to render the sequence. And we'll do that. And we'll see how long this takes. Uh, you can see the bar down here. If you double click on the bar here, it opens up a render progress window. And you can kind of see what it's, uh, what it's chewing on here. And if you hover over in the right area, it'll show you pretty quickly, depending on your computer speed, what it's working on. And that rendered in 19 seconds. So that's no big deal. What do you do after you render? You hit save. If you hit save and it starts rendering again, you need to go back and watch one of my other videos uh, about uh, preparation or layout preferences. But what you would do in the sequences uh, tab here in preferences, Turn this render on save off. Just turn it off, you don't need it on. Uh, and let me tell you why. Every time you're working in here, let's say that you were mapping and you're moving things around and you're testing it out and you just put, I don't know, two minutes and 59 seconds worth of work in it and it crashes. Well, it's gonna, it's gonna save at three minutes, right? But let's say you're doing this work, you're afraid you're gonna lose something and you hit save just to save what you've done. It's gonna render the whole thing. It's a waste of time. I render before I'm finished with it or when I can no longer see the effects playing back. 
this will render in the background. You'll always see something going on down here when you make changes and when you're playing it. So I'm not going to play this because there's audio in here, but you can see the house looks pretty good. Uh, we, you can click on different effects and that will show the model. And up here, we'll see the rest of the house that is really looking good. And we didn't do anything. Look at that. Beautiful. Pretty easy mapping. Pretty, pretty easy. And that's it. That is mapping. At this point, you're ready to put this in your show. Uh, in part three, we will discuss some of the advanced topics of of uh, dealing with models that don't match. There is one last thing I want to share with you when using X lights and a vendor's sequence. It is entirely possible to have a second version of a sequence running and copy and paste from one to the other. And there are times I will do this. Now this is just gonna to try to open up the same world because I have taught this that I want the mapping training to be my permanent folder for now. But if I were to open up that same sequence, our house, I'm just in another instance, and this is just for illustration, you would typically be opening up the main vendor sequence so that you have it. So we could have, let me resize this. There we go. And let me resize this one. Writing out of real estate here. Writing out of real estate. Okay. There we go. I think that'll illustrate it for us. So the window on the left, that's your world. The window on the right might be the sequences world. And we can scoot this over and give ourselves a little more room here. It's very, very easy to copy and paste from here. And what I would suggest is because there are timings or you can make your own, you can copy an entire section, right click, copy, and then you could find where you want to paste that. Maybe you wanted to see how that looks on one of your models that has nothing going on in it, right? So I could, that's one, two, three, there's three layers. So I make sure I have enough layers, right click, paste, and there's, there's new effects right there on the models. And maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but it's an easy way to get the, 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 but it's an easy way to get the effects there. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, how well your computer behaves when you do this depends on the system you have and how elaborate the effects may be, how many layers, if you, especially things like Liquid effect just absolutely kills X lights. It's one of the effects I stay away from. It was really cool years ago when we had it before shaders, but the liquid effect absolutely just is painful for X lights. Uh, kaleidoscope takes up resources. Uh, surely uh, some of the shaders do videos, things of that nature. So when you're copying big things like that, especially the shaders, or if you try to move a shader left and right, I highly suggest you copy or cut and paste shaders instead of moving them left to right. That really can cause X lights to lock up. It's just the nature of the beast. All right, that is the end of part two mapping. Let me know the questions you have and I'll be working on part three, maybe today, we'll see. And we'll catch you later.